Good evening, students. I'm Dr. Rod Rodriguez, and I continue to talk to you about the uniqueness of the American system. And today we're going to talk about, in the most simplest way, what we call liberty of conscience. This is something that the rest of the world preciously has been trying to get within their system. Most other nations join this idea of the church and the state and political opinions all flow from the top down. Most people don't have liberty. They don't have a property right in their opinions. But in America, America is unique because America, if you recall, was started by people that wish to worship God according to the dictates of their conscience. So culture, if you recall, I've said in the past, is religion externalized. That this idea of religious liberty flows from this fact that God is the author or the one that our, our worship is directed to. And in order for us to have the freedom to worship God according to the dictates of our conscience, it is from this idea, this religion, this Christian religion coming from Northern Europe after the Reformation, as people re reading the Bible, they realize that there is a no, pro no trespassing sign to the state. There's this idea that develops in America that the Bible is teaching that the jurisdiction of the state is outside the opinions of men, particularly religious opinions, and here's why. The uniqueness of this particular faith states that God wants worship coming out of one's heart. He doesn't want to coerce from outside pressures from the state or anybody else. He wanted it from the free will of man. In order to do that then, they realized that their opinions, their worship, they have a property right. And in other words, it had to be protected. And this theory began very simply, and you'll see this in some of the writers of the founders. In fact, I've given you two things to study that we'll debate on and talk about later. Madison's Memorial Remonstrance and the Religious Liberty Statute by Thomas Jefferson, defining what is religion and its duty that the state must protect. It's actually law still today in Virginia. One is written in 1785, the other one is 1786. That's significant because they, be, they become the foundation upon which the First Amendment of the Constitution is based on. And that great idea of religious liberty flows into the opinions of my political thoughts as well as an economic principle because one of the things I want to leave you with is the idea that every single philosophical system, every religion, has a economic expression. It has a uh, view of life tied to it. That outside skin, that structure must be consistent with the fundamental beliefs of these people. And America being founded on people that want freedom of religion because in Europe they had no freedom of religion. They were told what to believe and how to believe. And as they read their Bible they realized that they had to be personally responsible for God and that God demanded worship. So this idea developed. This triangle begins to set this quite uh, neat. In fact I believe and, you, and I want you to debate it and discuss it, do you see this in the writings of Madison's Memorial Remonstrance? That all men, according to as they understood, had a duty to worship God the Creator. Now some won't want to worship God at all. So who enforces this duty is God Himself. Since He wants it of His own free will, it gave us, man, a corresponding right against his fellow man not to interfere with that duty. If government forces you to worship God in a certain way, they have made themselves a little God and they have broken the first commandment. They have lord over your conscience and they become an idol. So this idea of religious liberty forms the basis for the immigrants coming over very early to America. But if opinions are outside the state's jurisdiction, then the the state, the role of civil government, according to this religious political philosophy of Christians, means that, that the state can only judge overt acts, not beliefs. That means that my political opinions as well are outside the jurisdiction of the state. Now you have the basis for that First Amendment religious freedom as well as political freedom and the free exercise thereof and we have the right to peacefully assemble peacefully, not to break law, not to be a lawbreaker, not to commit overt acts that destroy property. Okay, So this principle is very important. Now what we do is we go on though and this is an economic causes an economic explosion. Americans weren't smarter but they provided a framework, this framework that provided them the liberty to now create through the creative imagination an idea and now the state if we manifest it in writing we have a property right in it and the state has the duty not to rob or steal it 
but to protect it against others that may try to steal these ideas. That becomes the basis for patents and trademarks that become the hallmark and an explosion for creativity in America. You see it all stems from this idea of liberty of conscience to worship the Creator. I want you to look at those two documents. I want you to discuss it. And when we come back, we're going to discuss the effects of the conscientious observer in the military, how this is consistent with this idea that God can speak to a nation through the individual individual's conscience from the bottom up the flow of power and that how this property right of conscience is the basis for economic prosperity. Thank you very much.